In this video, let's work on form validations with data annotations. Let's go to Categories Controllers, and let's make sure that this breakpoint is here, and let's run the application with Debug. Now let's go to Categories, and let's choose any one of them. Now if I delete the name of the category, which shouldn't be allowed. You cannot have a category that doesn't have a name. You may have a category that doesn't have a description. So if we click on Save button, now if we hover the mouse over this object here, you can see that the name is now. If we proceed with this continue button here, you can see that the name of the beverage category is gone. So that's why we will need some sort of validation on this edit category page. And that validation should be triggered when the save button is clicked on and it should prevent the user from saving the category if the information on this form is not valid. We should always validate users' input because users may make all kinds of problems due to different reasons. One way to do form validations is to use data annotations. And to do that, let's stop debugging first. And let's go to the categories class definition. And we can see we have different properties here. In our case, we want to decorate the name property. Like I mentioned, you cannot have a category without a name. So I can decorate with a C sharp attribute and that is called required. And I can do a control dot to import namespace, which is under component model dot data annotations. Now with this attribute added to the property, we can run our application again and see what kind of difference this makes. Let's go to a category here. Notice that the name comes back. That's because we are using the in-memory data store. Every time you run the application, the default categories will show up. Right? All of the changes that you made in the previous run will be gone. So let's click on, let's say the same category here. And now let's delete the name again and click on the save button. Of course, we're gonna see the same problem. The name is still now, but if we go to the watch window here and let's type in model state. So this is a object that is defined within the controller class. If we look at the value of is valid and it says false, validation state is invalid. So what this means is that although the controller is still handling the request, the controller actually knows that the form values are not valid. And it's up to the developer to handle that invalid request over here. So what we need to do, first of all, of course, we need to stop debugging. Secondly, we will need to check the model state here. So we can use is valid here only when the model state is valid, do we actually go ahead and update the category and then do the redirection. Now, what should we do if the model state is invalid? Where do we want the user to go? Of course, we need user to see the same category page. And on that category page, we need to see error message so that the user has the opportunity to correct his or her mistake. So therefore, just like any action method, if we want to show the view, we just return the view just like this. And we feed the category into the view, combine them together, generate the HTML. And because we have the category here, so the user can see the data that he or she entered and then has the opportunity to correct the mistake. And now when we run the application and go to categories, go to beverage, and try to delete the name again, you can see that we redirect it back to the category page. We don't see the name, but we don't see the error message also. However, if we manually go to the categories page, you can see that the change is not actually made. So the only missing step here is to display proper error message. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's jump back to Visual Studio. This time, we need to go to the view. So right click, on the edit method and click on go to view here. The view is the place where we can make changes to display the error message. And guess what? We use tag helpers to help us to display error message. So we can have a div on the top 
and we can use tax danger to display the error message in red and we are, we are going to use asp dash validation dash summary here and here we want to use all because we want to display all type of error messages the other one that is available is model only so this shows only the error messages comes from the model i suggest that we always use all so that we display all type of error messages now we have the summary for displaying the error message we also want a specific error message beside field name here so for that we can add another div right here and this time we can use the column class so this one is going to choose a size automatically because we are not specifying the size number so here we're going to use span and then we can still use the same class here which is text danger and here we can use application validation for and for which field of course in this case it's for the name field and then let's close the span element properly and let's run the application again now let's go to categories and this time let's go to meet and let's delete the name of the meet and now we can see the error message summary on the top and error message for the specific field so if we have more than one field all of the error messages will be displayed on the top this in the summary area and then individual error messages will be displayed just beside the field so in this video we covered form validation with data annotations to do that let's summarize first step we need to use data annotations to decorate the properties then there's different attributes you can use some of them you can use to limit the range for example if you have a number let's say age you want the age to be greater than zero so you want to put a validation attribute for that you can go to microsoft documentation to find all of the available attributes for data annotation type of validation and use them accordingly that's the first step right use the attribute to decorate properties of the model class secondly we go to controllers and check the model state the third step is that we need to go to view and put a validation summary if you want to see the summary on the top or on the bottom or on both places and then you can display individual error messages right beside each field if you want the user to see them so that's everything i want to cover in this video i will see you in the next one